Hello everybody. In this video tutorial I'd like to show you how I would go about editing an Aurora photo. Now for this particular image we're actually going to use six photos and we'll stitch them together using Photoshop and um, we might do a couple of other things while we're there and then we'll come straight back into Lightroom and we'll be doing the majority of the editing uh, right here in Lightroom. Now this is the end result that we'll hope to achieve um, if we do things right. And uh, just to give you an idea of the photos that we're working with, if I have hit um, I on my keyboard, you can see this photo was taken on the 30th of April, uh, 25 past 11. So 25 second exposure at f2.8 with ISO 3200, and I'm at 14 mil. So what I'll do is I'll select my first photo, which is this one, pointing straight down to the rocks, shift click the last photo, all the way up in the sky and I'll go right click editing merge to panorama in Photoshop. Now once we get to this photo merge dialog box just one thing to um, keep in mind if you click on auto and you bring it in things might not always work exactly how you want it to. Go back into Lightroom just export the files again but this time try reposition. I found in the past that by using reposition um, I've had luck where auto has failed so I'll just click OK to that. Okay, I just briefly paused the video there to um, save you some time. We don't all need to watch the merging. Now this is a pretty large file. If you have a look in the bottom left corner, you'll see it's uh, one, almost 2 gig. So it's a pretty large file. I guess that's because I'm using a Nikon D800. It's massive file sizes and uh, once you bring six of those together, it quickly adds up to a pretty large image. Are you straining your neck? Are you looking to the left? <laughs> um, Looks like it's done a pretty good job with the stitching. I'm happy with that. So I don't need these layers anymore. I'm just going to flatten this image. Straight away we're down to 430 meg and that's much better. So now I can go image, rotate and rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Hit C on your keyboard to bring the crop tool and uh, we'll just get rid of this white spaces. Unfortunately, I didn't shoot this image very well, leaving me um, the most interesting part of the Milky Way, the bulge, is going to be out of picture. I'm not going to worry too much about the white corners. We can fix that, hopefully. Bring it in. I'm also just bearing in mind what my final composition might look like. We've got a wonky horizon, so let's fix that while we're here. Straight in. And we'll tick the tick. Right, because we're in a background layer that's locked, I can go and use my magic wand to click on an area. Um, can I select, modify, expand by about five? Yep, that should work. And delete. That brings up our content aware full. 100% opacity. Okay, please bring us in some stars. Control D. Yep, that looks pretty good. I'll do the same over here. Um, can I go again? Select. Modify. What's that? Shift F6 expand. Okay. Delete, yes. And I'll do the same for this one. Select, modify, expand, delete, enter. Control D to deselect. Yeah, that looks pretty convincing to me. I'm happy with that. Right, we're almost ready to go back to Lightroom. I might just do one more thing here in Photoshop, and this is this light. It really bothers me. I'm going to get rid of it. I don't want it in my picture. I guess we could use the Spot Healing Brush tool. Let's try it. Oh my God. It's a little bit sore using my bracket key. Ugh. No, don't like that. Control Z. I'm going to go to the Clone tool, so I'll use my S for Stamp. Alt click right here on the horizon and I'll bring my, this is so that I can easily see 
the riser line and I'm just going to make that light go away. Don't have to be too careful here. I mean, I'm zooming in pretty big. No one's going to notice this sloppiness of mine unless they go and look at my image at a hundred percent with their nose stuck to it. And that's not going to happen. That would be silly. Right, so I'm just uh, alt clicking randomly and um, cloning in some of the areas nearby just to get rid of this. Light glow. Like so, hold down the shift, lets me drag, alt, click. I'm not going to spend too much time with this. It gives you an idea. Okay. Double click on the hand, brings us back. I'm going to just do one more thing while I'm here, and that's control L. I'm going to move my whites ever so slightly to the left. Okay, that. Control L. I'll do this a few times in very short moves. Just gotta make sure that I don't overblow this uh, aurora here. That's quite bright. Okay, that'll do. Now because we came from Lightroom, we can just go to File and Save and this image is waiting for us back in Lightroom. Now that we've got our file here in Lightroom, let's start playing. I don't really have a specific way of doing things. Um, I like to do what I, what bothers me the most or what I feel like doing at the time. There's no particular workflow. What I'm going to do is, I like a blue sky um, for my night shots. So I'll just grab a gradient tool, drag it down, and I'm going to cool this down a bit. I also find for night photography on the sky, up in your contrast. Quite a bit works nicely. Just keep an eye on make sure it doesn't affect any other areas. It doesn't seem to be. So I'll go quite high on the contrast there. And um, nice and cool. I like a blue sky. Right, good. Let's grab the gradient tool again. This time we'll go from the bottom up. And I want to just um, bring in this foreground a bit. So I'm going to go exposure up a bit and clarity. That's it. Good. Now I really like this green area here, but I want to smooth it out a bit. So I'm going to grab my adjustment brush. This time I'm going to go clarity down and I'll go sharpness down. Exposure, I might just double click to zero that. We can always come and adjust the exposure later. and. Um, I'm just going to go over this water here and try and smooth it out a bit. You can use your mouse wheel to scroll it up and down to change the brush size. I've actually got a Wacom tablet, um, so I've got a different way of adjusting my brush size. Okay, that's good. I like that. I do like this bit, so let's try and um, see if we can um, bring in the clarity. By the way, if you hold on your Alt key and you click right here, that resets all your sliders go back to zero. Clarity up, I'm going to go exposure up a tiny little bit and I'm going to put some emphasis on this water here. Wow, it looks like there's even a bit of nice green glow on the rocks. I'm just painting in some exposure and clarity on this foreground. I might even warm this up a bit. Too far. Uh, okay, good. I, that didn't do anything. Okay, I'm liking it so far. I want to spend some time in the Milky Way. I'm going to zoom in on here. And um, 
I just go full. Having trouble with my zoom. Cool. What I'll do is I'll grab a um, brush and I'll darken the exposure. And then I'll just be going over the areas in the Milky Way that's already dark and darken it slightly. We'll have the contrast on this as well. All the little lines that I see that's dark. I'm going to make darker. It's a pity we don't have that bulge of the Milky Way where all the good stuff happens. Just very gently. This is probably a bit too much, so I might just bring this contrast down a bit. Okay. Done. I'm going to grab another brush. This time I'll go slightly brighter and um, go around. The outside, all the bright bits. Okay, I'll do these two little Megalani clouds while I'm at it. I'll just grab one more brush, go a little bit less, a little bit bigger, and do a broad stroke. Just around the outside of the Milky Way. Okay. Let me see. How's this looking? Backslash on my keyboard gives me a before and after. That's good. I do see a lot of noise, so let's go and address that noise. I'll go about 30%. I usually do a uh, a bit of a ratio, 30, and I'll make this 70. If I go 60, 40, 50, 50, something like that. Let's see. Come on, load. So that's quite noisy. Fifty seventy, but what I'll do now is I'll um because we've softened everything, um I'm going to hold my Alt key and click on the mask. So this will sharpen everything that's white, it'll leave the black stuff alone. So then water is going to stay nice and soft, and it should sharpen the rest of the image. That might be a little bit too much. Something like that. Okay. What else can we do? I think that's about it. That should get you going. Thanks for watching.